This week on Kentucky Afield. Muskie are the freshwater apex predator of North America, and Kentucky has plenty of them. But their population does require some help from the department. We'll show you where they come from. Next, we're taking to the woods and getting excited for the early muzzleloader season. Right over here to the left, 40 yards. Then, we're on the Ohio River. And that's where we're gonna catch fish. And taking advantage of a great fall bite. Oh, here we go. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Uh, Kentucky Afield. Every week, Kentucky Afield brings you features on hunting and fishing across the state. That's my pup. I'm proud of him. Here he comes right there. Let's get ready. Get ready. Look at that. What a nice, nice fish. Hey, we wow. dug up right there. We did. There he is. Ooh, a nice one, too. Boy, he's healthy. What do we got? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Got the first help. Got one. Big small mouth. Very nice. Double point. They're in there. There they go. Oh my gosh. Woo. Look at that joker. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Whoa, this is a good one. <laughs> That's better than good, Chad. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you've ever caught a muskie here in the state of Kentucky, chances are that fish was raised in one of our fish hatcheries. Now, let's take a look at exactly how that process works. I'm here today with Mike Harden. Mike, I know you've been with the Fisheries Division for a long time and you're currently program manager and assistant director, but lifetime muskie fisherman. Lifetime. <laughs> I grew up, uh, first place I ever swam was at a riffle at the mouth of Warks Run Creek. Oh yeah. And of course that's impounded by Cave Run now and it's also a good musky place. We recently just spent some time at Minor Clark Fish Hatchery which is pretty important for the musky population here in Kentucky. Uh, Clark Hatchery is the only hatchery, we've got two hatcheries and that's the only one that grows musky. So actually the, the trying to reintroduce musky into our waters in, a, in greater numbers kind of started very close to Cave Run Lake. How many years ago? That's well interesting. It's 1973, so that puts it at about 50 years uh, this year. Okay. So, you know, we ought to commemorate that and go musky fish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I couldn't agree more. You, and, I think I caught my first musky with you in the boat we uh, did. I at Cave Run it. Lake. Yes. <laughs> that is no, awesome. This, this that is time of year is not that far away. It'd be time to go try it again. Here at the end of summer, when we start seeing some cool nights, it'll be time to get out the bucktails and, and go give them a shot. So tell me a little bit about what the department does in the process of, of raising muskie to be released back into our Kentucky streams and lakes. We get fish from uh, the local waters, uh, usually out of the tail waters or, or the lake, and uh, we bring them to the hatchery. And of course, then we go through the, the hatchery protocol to induce spawning. We're located just below Cave Run Lake here. So we have easy access to the brood fish and we're able to maintain brood stock on site as well. Females are spawned into a dish pan. Once we collect the eggs from the females, we'll have a separate crew that are collecting the milt from the males. Milt is added at a couple different stages during the fertilization process. Once egg collection is complete for that female, we'll add water that's stirred in for about two minutes to ensure that the eggs are fertilized. Once it's been two minutes, we'll rinse the eggs off with water three times. Then we'll add diatomaceous earth stirred into the eggs. That is allowed to sit on the eggs for about a minute, and then we'll rinse three times. Then the eggs are set aside to allow the water harden for about three hours. 
After they water harden for three hours, we will take the eggs. We will actually use a disinfectant called uh, Ovidine. Uh, the eggs are disinfected in, in a disinfectant bath for about 10 minutes, and then the eggs are split into different hatching jars and placed onto the hatching battery. They'll stay on the hatching battery for about 11 to 14 days until they're ready to be pan hatched. After we pan hatch the eggs, they're placed into trays inside our tanks here. They will swim out of those trays in five to seven days and they'll go down into the Spontex material in the tanks. After about 11 to 14 days, they'll swim out of that material and go through what's called swim up and they'll swim up to the surface. At that point, we'll take those fry and we'll stock them into seven to nine one acre ponds down here on the hatchery. After we put them in the ponds, we, we don't stock fry or like we do some of the other fish. Okay. Uh, we grow these out, and so we feed them, give them a lot of great care, because we, you know, we want to make sure that we have the most success when we put them in the water. So we grow them out with uh, feeding them minnows or goldfish, and then at the end of the summer, we have two different stocking categories. We'll stock our streams with uh, nine inch fish. But for our four lakes, Cave Run, Green River, Buckhorn, and Dewey Lake, we grow them out to a little bit longer, you see those in around the 12 inch range, and that gives them a good chance of success. Each year, you know, we try to raise 11, 12,000 fish there at that hatchery. And then of course, those get distributed across the state. So it's very important and uh, it's critical to the muskie. Interestingly, one of the best streams uh, in those early surveys for muskie, you know, back in the late 60s and 70s, one of the best streams was the North Fork of Licking River, which now of course is the headwaters of, of Cave Run. Oh yeah. Well, I tell you what, I know you love, I know you love the musky. Every time we start talking musky, you get that grin and that giggle, and you're like, uh, I know you, you love fishing for them. And you know what, if you've ever had success catching a musky, how could you not? I mean, it is literally the apex predator, the, the wolf of the water. And I'm very proud of the work that's being done right there at Minor Clark. Yeah, the work that's being done now, and uh, really the foundational work that some of our early biologists here at the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife did You'll see their work cited uh, in many of the other states' uh, uh, musky programs as well. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. And Thanks, next, Chad. next time it'll be, instead of standing by water, we'll be on the water. In How six about that? weeks. In six <laughs> weeks, let's hit it. Let's do it. <laughs>
I didn't want to shoot a doe in this bedding area because the area where they're going in there, I didn't want to go in there to get a doe out. Now, if I get in there this afternoon and a doe comes out early and gives me a chance to get a shot out in the field, I'll probably take that shot and then go back and buck hunt till dark. I know the bucks are in there, but a shot early in the hunt, I don't think we'll mess with that too much. You know, I did have a coyote come through this morning. I thought about trying to get a shot at that coyote, but I really didn't want the smell of that coyote right there laying by my stand the whole time. So pretty cool seeing. Been seeing tons of wildlife out of this location. It's a pretty easy walk in, but I gotta go through a little bedding area to get there. I gotta slip through real quiet, get up in this field edge, and literally with a muzzle loader, I am about 180 yards to the property boundary. It's a pretty big open area for a muzzleloader hunt. It's absolutely perfect. I haven't muzzleloader hunt the last few seasons. I haven't been taking advantage of it, and I'm excited to be out here today. Well, we're up here, ready to start this hunt. I tell you what, I'm about as confident in today's hunt as I have ever been, just because how many times I've hunted the other end of this field 400 yards away, and I've never hunted down there without seeing deer right here. So hopefully, Get one out here early, get a shot, take a doe, and buck on the rest of the way out. That would be ideal. Oh dear, right over here to the left, 40 yards. Looks like there's four. Here they come. There's dough in the front. She looks to be probably the biggest one. Okay, here she comes. She's gonna move to her left. I'm surprised to see that deer run off. But it, a big smoke cloud came up. I really don't know what happened. Hopefully, we've got dinner on the ground. So now we can just hunt for some antlers. where I know from here on out, I am buck hunting and buck hunting only. Hopefully, get to use that buck tag. I thought this was a great opportunity to do that today. Just didn't show up, I ran out of light. Well, found my two does. They actually ran on the same trail within 20 yards of each other, so I pulled them together here. My trophy buck never showed up. We did see a couple small bucks, nothing that I was that interested in. And I was sitting there thinking, you know what? I can't hunt tomorrow. Muzzleloader season's only two days. I thought, you know what? This is a great opportunity for me to unload my muzzleloader, go ahead and fill the freezer, top it off, and now I can focus the rest of the season on some antlers. Fall brings some unique fishing opportunities that may not be available during the dog days of summer, like hybrid fishing. We're out here today in western Louisville, right on the banks of the Ohio River at a brand new boat ramp. Interestingly enough, I have Michael Scott here, who is the director of engineering, information, and several other things, right? Yeah. This was one of the projects that you guys worked on. This is a brand new boat ramp right here in western Louisville. 
Yeah, it's one of our engineering projects, and so I am the division director of the Engineering Infrastructure and Technology Division for the department. This project started a long time ago, but actual construction we started back in spring of 2020, and we started the, the earthwork and all the construction concrete work to get this boat ramp in place. And then it was a partnership with the city of Louisville. They came in behind us, and we built the, the boat ramp portion. They built the, the parking lot portion and they finished that up in the spring of 2021. This is a really interesting project because, you know, the Ohio River offers so much opportunity. There you go. Oh, she just barely hooked too. You got a double, haven't been here 20 minutes. Ohio River catfish <laughs> at its finest right there. But you gotta be able to access the water, right? This is right below the falls and it's on a stretch where in Kentucky, I don't know how far down you gotta go to get to the next boat ramp. Kentucky side, there's not another boat ramp for a long ways and this is excellent access for our largest population city, and so it's it's perfect fit to uh, get the people on the water that's close to them. We're gonna launch the boat here, and we're gonna make our way up. You know, it's early October. It's a good time of year to catch hybrid bass. Yeah. Now, it takes special precautions. We're gonna be life jacketed up from the time we leave. I'll tell you what, if you're gonna come down here and do this, first couple of times, you probably need to come with somebody who's got a lot of experience. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna fish till hopefully right up about dark, and you know, I know they've been catching big fish. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Thank you. And that's where we're going to catch fish. I got one. You got him? Looks like a good one? Yep. Oh, it looks like a good one. That didn't take long. <laughs> no. All right, there he is. Oh. Woo. Perfect. <laughs> That's why we get to the net under them, man. That was uh, that was awesome. Saved him. I tell you what, we just got up here and made a couple casts. You caught that one. I've been bumped a time or two. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. That's awesome. Probably five minutes or so. The you're just throwing a uh, just a fluke. Yeah. And uh, just a normal zoom fluke, nothing special. Four inch fluke, and right up there. Now listen, this is not something for the faint of heart. This is a situation where you gotta have jackets on. You don't know the river and know exactly what you're doing. You could really get hurt. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, this is a healthy fish. If you were out on the lake, you know, for a hybrid, you go, oh, that's a pretty good fish. Man, I'll tell you what, this is probably what you think, four pounder? Yeah. They get really, really big down here. Like yeah. it wouldn't surprise me one bit if we don't catch a six, eight, nine, 10 pounder. Very possible. Well, nice job, Michael. Awesome. Oh, here we go. Oh, man. You add, one, how hard these things fight, and then you add this current. Uh, we got you. Looks like a brother or sister to exactly what you caught. Yeah. A little smaller. Man, I'll tell you what, fish. though, there is absolutely very few things more exciting than a hybrid bass in, in heavy current catching one of those. What I've heard, I don't, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard there's one of the hardest fighting fish pound for pound oh. in fresh water. Oh, I don't doubt it. And I'm throwing a little fluke, almost the same thing, a little green on the end. We uh, went with the bedazzled head because that's all they had. And I really don't think in this current it really matters. As long as they like it, I like it. They seem to be liking it right now. <laughs> Oh, I saw that. You got him. You got him up there in the current. I saw your line bounce real <laughs> yeah. hard. Can't tell what I got. He's swimming towards me, maybe. Doesn't feel too big, but he has not Oh, oh that's good. a good one. That's a good one. He is just swimming towards me. Oh, got it. Got him. He's not happy yeah. about it. Yeah. What a joy. How, how much fun is this? It's a blast. Hard to beat. <laughs> yeah. It is hard to beat. Yeah. Now, it takes a little work. It comes with some inherent risk. It takes some education. And you know what, what you can't see is that this trolling motor is not able to hold us in this place. We literally have a, a boat jockey driving us yeah. to keep us in the right position. Hey, nice fish. Thanks. Let's catch some more. 
So Michael, obviously we, boat ramps are a big part of what your engineering department does, but what, what other projects do you guys work on that sportsmen and women, as they travel the state, may not realize that the Fish and Wildlife has an engineering department that is responsible for that? Yeah, there's a wide variety of projects that we cover and oversee. A lot of the, the shooting ranges we have on our WMAs were constructed uh, by our engineering division over the years. and. We maintain those and keep those up and do any renovations, repairs we need to those. I mean, just simple parking lots. Like recently we built a new parking lot on Palmer Road access at Tethersville Lake WMA. That's springtime white bass run. And it's just a wide variety of things that we find ourselves getting into. And some of it is behind the scenes that you may not think of us being involved with, but our division is the technology side of it. And that's, if you go online and buy your hunting and fishing license, you're uh, using a program that was developed in-house by our IT staff to purchase that license. And so they've got, I think, 90 plus systems, some of them public facing, some of them just support the mission of the department. So if you uh, hunt and fish in the state of Kentucky, you're in some form or fashion, you're interacting with the engineering department with the Department of Fish and Wildlife somehow. Yeah. The simple aspect of buying a license or telechecking an animal or launching a boat, all that, you guys are involved in some form. Oh, got to go. Yeah. All right. I think he wanted my rod. Oh, yeah, there we go. They all look like they're the exact same <laughs> year. Yeah. It's a little smaller here, too, but man, I'll tell you one thing. They hit there in that current and they take off. It's just hold on. Just a beautiful fish. Oh, I got one right there on the wall. Oh, yeah. Nice. You were right on the wall, huh? That's where I just got hit, too. Literally, like, I thought I was hung up. That's so close. I got the net ready whenever you get it in. Oh, he's running now. <laughs> Coming up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, a little better. A little bit bigger. Yep, definitely bigger. There you go, man. That's a good one. Nice. I tell you what, you take a fish that powerful, you think about all the bait that's coming through there and it's all distressed and disoriented. That fish is strong enough to go right where it wants and chase it right up against that wall. You literally caught that how close to that wall? Right on that wall, maybe two feet from it. Two feet. <laughs> yeah. So you gave it a nice, easy piece of bait, nice prey, and thing took advantage. Sure did. Great fish, man. Thanks. <laughs> Surf fishing. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Still a pretty good fish. Man, they are so aggressive. Look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. I tell you what, Mike, think about it. this fish started in a fish hatchery. Yeah. Because these hybrids, they don't reproduce naturally. Pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely fun to get out here and put one of our projects to use and definitely hope to make it back out sometime. Oh yeah. So. Hey, I really appreciate you coming out today. All right. It's been I enjoyed an absolute it. blast. Let's get right. this fish back in. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out 15-year-old Brianna Griffin from Warsaw, Kentucky. She took this nice 5x5 bull on the opening day of the bull firearm season in Bell County. She shot it at only 17 yards with her dad's 7 millimeter. Nice job. Check out the size of this catfish caught by Myla and Brooks Hitchell. They were running a trot line in their grandparents' lake in Cromwell, Kentucky. Nice job. Here we have Landon Atkins with two nice spotted bass from Lake Cumberland. He caught these while pre-fishing for a high school bass fishing tournament. Nice job. Check out this nice nine point buck that was taken by Jake Hall in Carter County. This deer was taken on the opening day of crossbow season. Haley Mattingly found a little time to do some fishing at her family reunion in Grayson County. Nice bass. Here we have Stella Sanders with a nice bass that she caught while fishing in her uncle's farm pond in Caneyville, Kentucky. Nice job. Check out the size of this crappie caught by Matthew Gibson on Kentucky Lake. This fish weighed three pounds. Nice job. Here we have Missy Metcalf of Breckenridge County with her first double while trapping coyotes in the 2022-23 season. Nice job. 
Check out the size of this bluegill caught by John Henson. This fish was caught at a family farm pond in Harrison County. Nice job. Here we have Ben Maynard who's shown us that the muskie at Dewey Lake are getting big. This fish was caught and released. Nice job. I hope your muzzleloader is sighted in and ready to go because the hunting season opens up this weekend, October 21st and 22nd. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Hello, I'm Chad Miles. Did you know that when you buy a fishing license, it does more than provide summertime fun? That's nice. It produces millions of fish that are stocked in our waterways. It constructs new opportunities for boat ramps and public access. It provides new sustainable habitats for our native fish. It creates quality fishing opportunities close to home. It helps protect our home waters. And it makes for a better, more beautiful bluegrass for all that live here. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. It's more than just a fishing license.